Hello everyone, welcome to South Alabama Cooking. I'm in my kitchen today putting together some recipes because Carla has COVID. So I'm making homemade chicken noodle soup for her and also I'm making an elderberry syrup. So let me turn around here and show you what I've got. This is my chicken noodle soup cooking back over here in these two pots. Right here in this little pot I have whole cloves. Let me show this to you. I've got 20 whole cloves. I have eight cinnamon sticks and I have one large piece of ginger about this size right here. I've got all of that in that pot and I'm going to cook that down and that's going to be part of what I add into the elderberry syrup. Okay, so I'm cleaning my elderberries. Here's a bunch of them right here. And you can see there's some red ones and a few little green ones. You wanna be sure to pick those out and throw them away. They're not ripe. You just want these nice dark black ones. And these are elderberries that I have foraged just out in the wild. And so you just want to just pick the berries off just like this. And then we'll need to wash them and then we'll be ready to process them. All right, everyone, we are ready to finish up this elderberry syrup recipe. Now I started on this recipe yesterday and I didn't get it finished. So I put it in the refrigerator, I pulled it back out today and I'm finishing it up. Well, yesterday I told you that Carla had COVID and since yesterday I have come down with COVID. So now we both have COVID. So we need to get this elderberry syrup together so we can take some. All right, now I cleaned my elderberries. I rinsed them good. I had six, six cups. I put them in this pot right here and I cooked them for probably about 40 minutes. You're supposed to cook them for at least 20 minutes. I cooked them for about 40 minutes and I tried to keep my temperature, I've got my little, my little thermometer right here, I tried to keep my temperature between 185 to 195 degrees. And that, cooking, cooking it at that temperature and for at least 20 minutes will kill the toxins that are in the elderberry. So I've got my elderberry juice right here. Now I've got a couple of other pots here. I have one and a half cups of wild cherries that I cooked down in this pot. I've got one and a half cups of wild blueberries that I cooked down in this other pot back here. And then I've got my, I've got my cinnamon and ginger and cloves cooked down in this pot. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna pour this all up together. That's going to be my mixture from my elderberry syrup. And then I'm going to add honey to it. And I've also got to test the pH of this syrup to make sure that it is, it is acidic enough. So I'll show you how I do that as well. Okay, let's see if I can get things set up where you can see what I'm doing. Let me get this thermometer off of here. Now I've got a strainer right here, and that's to strain out the berries as I pour the juice in here. So we're just going to start with the elderberry juice. We're gonna start straining that. And it looks like I'm gonna to have to get another bowl because I've got so much juice. So let me get another bowl. you can see what I'm doing here. I'll try to switch everything around so you can see. Okay, I'm getting a bigger bowl here. And I'm just gonna pour the strained juice into this bigger bowl. And this will just be the process that I will go through until I get all of the berries strained into the same container, along with, like I said, the cinnamon and ginger and cloves. I've got all of the juice in one bowl. 
right here. Now what we want to do next is we want to check the acid level of this juice. And what you need is you need some pH paper. And I ordered this, I don't know, from Amazon or something. We used to call this, in high school, in science class, we called this litmus paper. But it says pH paper. So this is going to test the acid level of the juice that we have here. And you've got this little chart that you can go by. And here's your little pieces, your little strips. We're just going to tear one strip off. And we're going to stick it down in our juice for about a half a second and pull it out and we need to I'm going to lay it right here on this paper towel I need to let it dry a little bit and then we'll compare it to the chart and see where we're at on our acid level okay our pH level looks really good it looks like it's about a three right there according to the chart and the pH needs to be at least 3.4 or less so it looks like we're right at a 3 but just to be safe I'm going to add a little lemon juice okay I'm going to add two tablespoons of lemon juice then I will retest my juice By the way, the berries, when I cooked the berries, I just covered them up with water. I didn't think to tell you that earlier in the video. Just cover them with water and simmer them, and you may have to add water if it cooks down. All right, let's stir this up real good, and then we'll do another test. All right, we'll let this dry and then we'll check it. Okay, I'm still not totally satisfied with the acid level, so I'm gonna add two more tablespoons of lemon juice and test it again. And this is what you want to do until you get your acid level where it needs to be. Okay, let's try it again. Now this elderberry syrup recipe that I am making today, I'm not making it to can. I'm making it to go in the refrigerator. So I'm going to pour this up in jars. I'll put one in the refrigerator and any extra jars, I'm going to put those in the freezer and as I need them, I'll just pull them out of the freezer and let them thaw out and use them. If you're looking for a recipe that can be canned, if you will go to South Alabama Cooking on YouTube or Facebook and just scroll through my videos, I have a video demonstrating how to can elderberry syrup. So I ended up adding all together six tablespoons of lemon juice and we've got our acid level down to about a two so that is a nice safe level right there and i'll just show you here's my little piece of paper my little strip and put it up there by the two and that's about what it is right there so we are ready to pour some of this up in jars so i'll just do that get my jars here. I've got a couple of jars. See if we can get things turned around here where you can see.
Okay, I know I've got a funnel around here somewhere. Here it is. Here we go. Let's stir it good. Okay, I'm going to put juice in these two jars and I'm going to save a little space at the top so that I can add some honey. Here's our juice. Now, I hadn't really planned to measure the honey. I was just going to pour some in there, give it a little sweetness, and of course the honey has good properties to it as well. It's, it's healthy for you. So, probably, I don't know if I'll pour half of this little jar in there or not. Just pour some in. And you want your syrup not, you don't want it hot. You want it to be cooled down some because hot liquid will destroy the beneficial properties in your honey. All right, so here we are. Here's our elderberry syrup, y'all. Okay, I hope that Mincar is going to be feeling better soon. <laughs>